Hey everybody, Arlex here again, and welcome back I'm to gone. Planescape Torment Enhanced Edition. Today, we actually go through with the Mammoth Quest, the Mage Quest line, all that. Don't know if we'll finish, but you get the point. And let me fix the voice volume just a smidge. That's probably perfect. Alright. I do believe, let me know what I've been, let me make sure here. A thing happened! Not the thing I wanted! Hold on. We are having some technical ineptitude. Yes, resume life. Cool beans. That's what I want to do anyway. And let me double check my journal. Ah, that's what we're doing. Done. Alright, well, let's go to the market. We go through here. Done. And through here we go to, do I still have my proficiency points? I do. Alright, cool beans. Make it attacked randomly and keep going this way. Yes. Done. Now then, she wants me to talk to. Give me a black to find the fruit merchant. Alright, fruit merchant it is. If I remember correctly, that is this guy. Okay. Uh, wrong person. And it. There, there you go. There you go, right there. I could have sworn he said fruit, but never mind. Mebeth, the midwife of the square, needs some herbs sprung from this seed here. Can you help me? Oh, he's experienced. The man takes the seed, looks at it critically. As he presses it against his thumb and forefinger, he winces, and a small drop of blood appears on his thumb. Ah! This seed's got a bite on it. I noticed that. Do you have the herb she's talking about? He can't seem to take his eye off the seed. Lad, I don't know if there's anyone who has what your friend seeks to be square. I've never seen much of seed before. You would need someone who cultivates seeds such as these, for I have none. Very well, where would I find such a person? Journal. Don't know the dark of that, friend. He hands you the seed back to you. You'd be hard-pressed to find a gardener in the hive. Let's see, can I see? Okay. Looks like I have to. Try these spices. Gardener. You can just taste them all over here. It's been a while. You know, actually, I think I do know of one. Back in the area where the Smoldering Corpse Bar is... If I remember correctly... Wait a second. It's the northeastern part of the hive. I think it's down here. Hold on. It should take me where I want to go. Done. Yes. And I could have sworn there was an interesting guy up here. Talked about trees and such. Horns for trees. I saw that title earlier. Oh, wait, wait, what are you doing? Okay. You see a tired-looking, sorrowful old man who is gazing at the ash-dead tree in front of him. He is mumbling to himself, tapping his chin, is trying to figure something out. Occasionally, he shakes his head sadly. Greetings! He seems momentarily startled as you erupt his train of thought. He speaks in a calm, unhurried tone, but one full of sadness. Oh, greetings to you, friend. How's this day find you? Finds me well. He smiles, but sorrow still lies in his eyes. That's good, friend. Hope your good fortune continues. He seems about to turn back to the tree. Now does this day find you? He shrugs slightly and proffers a bit of a smile. Fortune finds me well, though I'm sad and just the same. Why is that? He pats the tree beside him. It's the trees here in the hive. They're dying, friend, and no one cares. Seeing the look on your face, he holds his hands up as if to silence you for a moment. It may not matter to some, but it's important to me. I feel it's a shame to see the last tatters of life and beauty in this war ward left uncared for to die. Can you understand that, friend? Uh, let me see if I... Uh, let me see if there's some alignment choice. Hold on. Okay, you know what? The last thing I did was kind of semi-good, semi-evil, so let's be a little good here. He seems surprised and blurts out. R really? Oh, I mean, wonderful. Perhaps you would. He pauses and seems suddenly suspicious. He recomposes himself, speaking in his usual slow manner. In any case, that's good. I suppose you have some questions for me now. Yes, uh, what? No, not just yet. What is it you were going to ask? 
For the first time, the man seems genuinely happy. Beaming? He explains, It's difficult for anything to survive here. Just look around and you'll see what I mean. I'm not sure it's possible for the three tr trees to thrive here, even if, they were s even if they somehow were to get enough light and clean water. Go on. He nods enthusiastically. But if enough people care, really want them to live, I just know they'll survive. They'll turn green again and flourish. That makes no sense. He smiles knowingly, shaking his head. You're new here, I can see that now. You don't un understand how things work, Insidial Friend. Belief is everything here. Everything. You could be right. I am right, I'm certain of it. A certain sense of conviction surrounds him like an aura. He seems so unlike the man you spoke to first. It's all I'd ask of you, friend. Just care for them, hope for their recovery in time. Should you enough... Should enough people want it, it will come to pass. Can you do that for me, friend? Eh, yes, I'll help. Excellent, my friend. Excellent. I thank you. You've given me back my purpose. Perhaps I can find others like you who will listen. Perhaps we'll make a di we'll make a difference. What about your companion friend? Would you again? Would you speak to them? On my, maybe another time. I'll do this another time. I could have sworn. There we go. Yes, I was right. I need some herbs sprung from this seed. Can you help me? Mourns for trees. Takes the seed from you and holds it up to his eyes. What an odd seed. Are those? Teeth along the edge? Barbs, perhaps. Where'd you come by it, friend? Old Mebeth, the midwife of the square. Needs some herbs and sprung from that seed. Do you know where I get them some? Get some. No. Mourns for trees. Continues to stare at the seed in his hand. This is the only seed of its kind I've ever seen. I... Ah. He winces and a spot of blood glistens on his thumb. The barbs on it are sharp indeed. Perhaps you should hold it. You can't help me either? Unless you can make that bat one grow, I cannot. Again, I've never seed, seen a seed of its like before, friend. Uh, it wanted to make it wanted to grow enough. Is it possible to make it grow? Perhaps if you cared enough to see it grow. Focus on the seed, will it to grow? To your surprise, there's a crack, and the seed splits. Twigs splitting from its surface like fingers. Instinctively, you drop the seed, but the talon-like twigs wrap around the, your wrist and will not let go. What the hell? Updated my journal. Mourns for trees, stares at the barred branches wrapped around your wrist, stunned. I think the barbs on those new branches would be more than enough for what your friend needs. Hope she can get this thing off of me. Look, before I... Oh, now no, wait. Wrong one. I don't want them anymore. Farewell. Alright, see you at Mebeth. Alright, we are back here at Mebeth. Mebeth turns as you enter and gives you a skeptical eye. Your path brings me ba you back here, does it, child? Returned with those herbs you wanted. Now maybe you can get this bramble patch off my wrist. Is that so? Mebeth glances at the herbs that surround your wrist. If so, think it off then. The question is, why didn't I think of that? Updated my journal. Creaking and snapping, the black bar branches unravel themselves from your wrist and formed in form into a tangled ball of brush and twigs. Looks like a nest of dead black snakes, Mebeth snorts. Think of it into a picture, think it into a picture frame or some such something with more structure and less angles. Imagine the barbed ball into a picture frame. The branched ball creaks, the twigs bending and twisting until the branches have bent themselves into a small picture frame. Two hand spans on a side. Almost unconsciously, you imagine the shape, to, you imagine shape the barbs to the back of the frame so it can be hung from the wall easily. How's that? Maybe stares at the frame for a moment, then cackles. Ah, square enough it is. Good work, child. Good work. She picks up the frame, scrutinizes it. This'll do nicely. Is this all you wanted it for? Aye, ah, well, this is enough, she sniffs. Aye, ah, but there's one thing I forgot to tell you to fetch when you left last time. It'll take you back to this merchant square, it will. Look for the cloth seller, Giscori. He has some rags of mine that he was supposed to wash, and, and long has it been since I first asked him to do it. I wonder if that makes me chaotic. Hold on. Okay, it doesn't seem to... All right. All right. Done. See you at the market. All right. Here we are. Let me find Gascori. I think he's here in the top, well, the middle top left. Yep. There he is, Gascori. All right. Here we go. You see a spindly-looking merchant with a br merchant with a brush of gray and red stubble across his chin. He wears several layers of brightly colored robes, so much though that he looks like a flag with arms and legs. Yeah, he's shaking slightly as you watch. Are you a Giscori? 
I, Gascori. He bows and spreads his trembling hands as he does. You notice his hands and forearms are a twisted mass of black scar. Yeah, black scar tissue. As if they were once badly burned. Uh, how did you hurt your hands? Okay, the score doesn't seem to have heard you. He answers only with his spiel, delivering in the, delivered in the same flat monotone. The score buy cloth, sell cloth, washcloth, men cloth, and he gestures at his layers of clothing with his shaking hands. Wear cloth. I asked, how did you hurt your hands? Giscori's? Oh, that's not nigh. Giscoral. Excuse me. Giscoral's monotone breaks. G Giscoral buy cloth, sell cloth, wash cloth, mend cloth, and... Hmm. Yeah, okay. So I can't even let this guy... Okay, I won't ask. Uh, never mind. Look, I'm here to pick up someone's wash. Mebeth the midwife, right, Picker Square? Giscoral blinks. Wash cloth? Yes, Mebeth, Red Picker Square? The rag picker. He taps his fingers as if counting something. I know, I remember. He holds up a trembling finger as if telling you to wait. Wait for him to fetch the wash. He comes back with a flattened mass of green rags. Thin as paper, yet so stiff they look like they could double as a wo as wooden boards. The rags are so caked with a greenish lime starch they look like it would take years of soaking to relax them. Uh, how many times did you clean these? The squirrel washcloth starts cloth every fifth day. Washcloth starts cloth every fifth day. His eyes flicker. The squirrel wash many years. Always starts cloth on fifth day. Squirrel's ritual. But they're ruined. Washcloth is squirrel's ritual. His voice is flat, almost zombie-like. Must starts cloth every fifth day. What's the point of doing it every five days when they don't need... Uh, never mind, just hand them over. Give cloth, he nods. And then hands you the rags. They're heavy. It's like carrying an armload of bricks. I'll take them to Mebeth. All right, see you at Mebeth. Ah, oh, right, there we go. Again. What's up? Go on, Mark. Go on. Mark, yeah. do your thing, Mark. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. Finally. Oh, right, let's kill this guy. That one's dead. Wish that one was dead. Damn. Good as done. Actually, let's just ignore him. Done. We're not gonna come back anytime soon. Yep, okay. Alright, once again, see you at Mebeth. Alright, here we are. Right. Mebeth seems lost in twisting the black branched picture frame you made for her. She is squaring the edges and snapping off some of the barbed seeds on the branches. She suddenly notices you and sets down the frame. Hi, child. I brought your wash. I think Gaskoral was a little heavy on the cleaning ritual, though. She takes the stacks of starched green rags from you and then she examines them critically. At least they don't tear. She sighs, or bend. What was with that cloth merchant, Gaskoral? His hands were all scarred, and he seemed slow. Mebeth's still turning the cloth over in her hands, lapping around her, tapping it around her with her finger. I can't talk today again. Well, child, sometimes one burns with the art, other times the art burns you. Is that what happened to him? Mebeth clicks her tongue. Mayhap. There's some There's some for who's using the art is like breathing. They strolls about with pointy hats and stinkweed pipes. Then there's a hedge wizards and plain touch gypsies, or fortune casters and half seers and midwives who flicker with the art. Them have a harder time of it. I think a was one of them. Meth nods eye, so to speak. In some ways, he's no different than he w he was. Addicted to habit and ritual, he was. She sets down the stiff rags. They clunk as though she places them on the floor. I now. There's one last thing I need from you, child. Of course. What do you need? Only the only this. I need some inks for scribing, some ingredients in one of my cookery books. So. Need you to fetch some from one of the merchants. Blasted mouth. Let me find the pronunciation for her name, because I think I got it, but hold on. Okay, if I did, I'm going to assume Kosajai. Very well. No, excuse me, I'll write Updated that on Updated my off. journal. Alright, see you at Kosajai. All right. Oh, there she is. This toothless old crone rakes up fish and brine. Spying your approach, she gives you a wide pink smile. Fish, my child? Fish heads, perhaps? Mayhap, excuse me. Wonder, can I do more with this? Child, hardly. Oh, yes, yes, but a child yard of my years. <laughs> Youngsters. Live your mistake and take a closer look. She shovels up to you. The fish stink is nearly overpowering. The old woman squints at your face first, frowning. And then into your eyes. Only then does she recoil in surprise. Oh my, how many years have those eyes seen? I do not know. How many do you think? 
Don't know, don't know. Too many, I'd say. But no matter. She leans close to whisper in your ear. It won't do to rattle the passerby. Let's keep it our little secret. She shrooms her normal tone of voice. So fish, my child? Mm -hmm. Pokes you. Okay. Alright. Meveth said you sell ink. She sent me to purchase some ink. She chuckles. Nay, sir. Nay, sir. I sells no ink. I sells just fish. Are you sure? Meveth the midwife of Rampicker Square mentioned you specifically. Ah, well, Kosajai was my dam's name. And my grandma's name. Damn, that's a new one. So it could be any of us, yet they're both in the dead book, so only this Kosajai matters. No idea what she's on about. A midwife in Rampicker Square, you say. She thinks for a moment. Don't know her, I don't. So, you don't have any ink? Well, I can't say that's much of a surprise. I swear remember this having me run in circles. Eh, let's be a bit more reasonable. Oh, sorry. Well, then, she said you would be able to help me, but if that's not the case, never mind. Now, hold on. Your midwife's friend's not all wrong. I know how you can get ink, but it may not be the ink you're looking for. The ink I'm thinking of bleeds from the gills of a brogata fin, it does. This brogata fin, it bleeds ink? She frowns, I... Thing is, that fish is not for eating. It's got a horrible taste. Scalds the tongue. You can ask Miriam. Miriam? Miriam? Miriam. She pitches her fish cell down the street of Southerly Way. She cackles. She might have well, have a one of yeah have one of the f them fish she, she needs on her pole. I'll go Updated out. my journal. All right. Next, we find her. But with that said, that is actually all the time I got for today. Trying to do another one of these today, but we will see. Oh, wait, that's it. Thank you for wasking. Well, well, well. Wasking! Yes. Thank you for watching. My name's Arlex. Glad y'all have joined me for this Let's Play. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and continue watching if you like it. Y'all have a good rest of the day. Bye.